ethnographic interviews. Ethnographic interviews are actually very, very commonly used. What are they? Well, it's a combination of what's called immersive observation and directed interview techniques. This is basically where you go into someone's workplace, let's say you're, if you're assuming that you're going to be creating a product for a workplace, and you just kind of sit and watch and see what they do. Where you are doing something that's called shadowing. Have any of you guys heard of shadowing before? Some of you have? have anyone, has anyone not heard of shadowing? I'm getting no response. I'm assuming that means some of you haven't heard of shadowing and don't want to tell me. All right, shadowing is where you as a technology person are able to convince an end user to let you follow them around and see what they do. All right, you are looking at a day in the life. So they go, I'm going to use you as my example. You go and you're going to start working. And I'm just going to kind of sit here and I'm going to watch and see what you do, right? And just kind of take notes, and then if I have a question, I may interrupt you very quickly and ask. And then at the end, because I'm taking notes, at the end, I'm going to look through my notes and see, is there any additional clarification that I need? And I'll ask you those questions. Now, you don't want to interrupt him as he's doing everything, because what happens with that? What happens to your attention? You have to shift it, so try not to interrupt them. But here's another thing you have to remember. You need to make sure, I'm going to use you again in a minute, you need to make sure that they are comfortable with you. So you really want to try to use what's called a master apprentice model of learning. Have any of you heard of that? That's where basically you're going to go to this person and you're going to say, you know, I really need to learn about what you do and what your work is. I don't know much about it. You are the master. I am the apprentice. So they're doing you a favor. All right, so you're not going to them and saying, all right, I'm going to design this thing, so go. Is that the right thing to do? Why are you doing that? I don't know. That's just a way to No. Oh, yeah, well, that's not the right way of th doing things. Let me write that down. How comfortable is he right now? Not so much. Now, if instead I go to him and I'm like, you know, I could really use your help. I need to design the system. I want to design something that you guys really need. And you're the expert. Can I just, you know, watch what you're doing? Sure, no problem. Awesome. How good do you feel now? Because you are the expert. Oh, you are the expert. It's a big difference. Now, here's another thing you want to remember when you're doing this, because you want to remember this for your group project, too. You're going to be using the master apprentice approach. Here's something you don't want to do. <clears throat> what are you doing? <laughs> Something, you're not letting me. No, no, go ahead. I'm not stopping you. You're on top of it. <laughs> uh, what? Personal space. <laughs> Don't you like me? <clears throat> How comfortable was he? Yeah, not so much. Right, so when you're shadowing, you need to remember personal space. All right, you don't want to hover. Think about when you know you're being watched and how comfortable you feel, rather uncomfortable. Not so much. In fact, I make students nervous just by coming to the middle of the classroom. So, like, mm. All right, so when you are running your participants, you want to remember they need to be comfortable, as comfortable as possible. Think about how you would feel. Use the master apprentice approach. You're not really going to be doing shadowing, but there are still aspects of it that you need to remember. So you're going to be observing what they do. Try not to interrupt them unless you have to. That's both for ethnographic interviews and your group project. And you want to periodically remind them that they are the master. Now, you don't have to say, you are the master. You want to make sure that they know that they are the experts and they are helping you. Now, here's another thing that's really interesting about asking people to help you. There's actually been research that's been done on this. And what they found is that when you ask someone to help you and they help you, they feel so good afterwards that the next time you ask them to help you, they are more likely to actually help you the next time than 
the first time you asked them or if you didn't actually, you know, if you just kind of tried to impose. Right? So you want to make them feel good, like they are really helping. Because that's going to give you better results. Now, of course, what does this do for us as designers? Well, help us understand directly how the user does his or her job, because that is critical to designing something that's usable.